Hi, welcome to another vintage computer slash calculator teardown. Very excited about this one, the FX730P. I had this one on my uh, eBay watch list for a while because, you know, I'm a scientific calculator fanboy. Oh, uh, check it out. Not only does it have all the basic computer stuff, it's actually got a scientific calculator built in. Yes, they, they all did, but this one has like the dedicated keys. You didn't have to do it through basic. So very excited. And But I didn't get it from eBay. I got it from this guy. Yes, filmed in front of a live studio audience. You might recognize Scott the Def Bomb. How's it going? If you don't know, he's all the way from New Zealand, even though, yes, he is a POM. Weird yeah. combination, but he lives in New Zealand. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Can't help but fight. <laughs> And, yeah, he dropped by the lab to say hi, and he bought this little baby. So, let's take it apart. Say bye. Bye. And we'll link in Scott's channel down below, if you haven't seen it. And at the end as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Scott. All right, let's have a look at this baby. Let's, ooh, switch it on. Look at that. Still works after all these years. 1986 vintage. And uh, I don't think it had a long, a very long life. I think it was uh, pretty much only produced for a year or two, then shut down. The contrast on the screen is really good, but how many, is that a, like a, what is it, 24 character or something like that? And uh, can we, I haven't used it before, Scott. Come on, tell me. Oh, it beeps. It has a key beep. Nice. Execute. Right, so do we have to put it in calculator mode? Function. Calc. No. Better learn how to use this. Hang on. So it's not actually as good as uh, the regular Casios. Didn't have like the Casio operating system. Um, it worked more like uh, the visually per perfect algebraic method, the VPAM calculators. So if you wanted to do like a sign, for example, you couldn't just go five and then shift sign like that. It didn't work like that. And it give you uh, error two. Thank you very much. You had to go, of course, to do it the visually perfect way and go sign and then space, you have to put the space, which is kind of, why can't it add the space if it needs the space? I guess you could have put a uh, bracket or something like that, but there you go, it would give you a direct result like that without having to uh, actually, you know, write a basic program to do it. So, you know, it's really nice that it had, uh, you know, your basic, it's got your logs and your square roots and, oh, it's even got the bloody hyperbolics in there as well. Hate the hyperbolic. Anyway, um, yeah, it's all there, and you didn't have to use the uh, basic programming language, but it did have um, 8K built in. Um, uh, I don't know what version of the basic the Casios used. Was it uh, some sort of Microsoft basic? I, I don't know. Did they have their own basic? I'd have to check that out. Um, that, what is that? No idea what that is. Anyway, it ran on two uh, CR2032s and one uh, CR1220, uh, that'd be the backup, and uh, 70 milliwatts for those playing along at home. So, you get a decent battery life out of that baby. Let's crack it open, shall we? Very nice bit of 1986 tech. Look at that. Love it. Check this out. It's got a couple of screws up there, but that, oh no, I thought that was like, ah, oh, no, that's a film. Is that a, I think that's, yeah. I think it's got a protective film on the back to prevent scratches, maybe. Something like that. Oh, that spins like a champ. Look at that. Fantastic. Let's see if we can... Oh, turn it off. See, oh yeah, it's got the expansion header, by the way. Um, 8K of uh, RAM. That'd be SRAM, none of this DRAM rubbish. And you could expand it with another 8K of RAM, which probably cost you a fortune back in the day. And there we go. These things are... There we go. Ah, oh, moon. We've got nothing. Look at that. And um, looks like we had that snow. Is that the memory expansion? This might be I.O. expansion. This would be internal memory expansion. Um, it just plugged in there and made contact. What did they do? They have uh, pogo pins in the uh, memory card or something, perhaps? Hmm. Anyway, there's our reservoir cap up there to uh, store. Although it does have a battery... Uh, does have a battery backup. These things are designed to be opened so that you can actually replace the. Oh no, there we go, the operational bat. Yeah, forgot to mention that. The two operational batteries are in there. Your backup battery's in here. And the reservoir cap 
would even provide a third method of storage because if you wanted to change your backup battery you needed these two to be fresh otherwise you'd lose your contents or um, if you of course if you're changing your main uh, batteries then this one has to be good otherwise you lose your uh, programs because it had no way had no storage unless there was some sort of external storage facility but I greatly doubt there was on this model and as a last ditch effort um, you'd probably get you know a few tens of seconds from your reservoir cap or something like that anyway let's try and get in further still don't know what that is oh that's got to be a belt clip is that a belt clip you wear this baby around on your belt Awesome. Nerds. Little springy there to connect to the back panel for some shielding, but, uh, you know, you've got to wonder why they bother. I mean, what's the... I oh, know, it work at it. And maybe it might work at 500 kilohertz or something like that. Might scream along at that uh, extreme processor clock rate. But anyway, um, so you wouldn't have, think, wouldn't have thought that it'd be a huge requirement at the uh, low power and low frequencies that we're operating inside this thing, but... Anyway, nice attention to detail. So, good thing about these is that they came apart really easy. Actually, it's got two of those little things. Why don't they bother having two? With two, you could actually have a uh, backplate removal detection thing if you wanted to. Maybe they did. Maybe it... I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, oh no, I missed another screw. This thing's just got a... What is it, like dozen screws to get this damn thing. Here we go. We're going to be in like Flynn shortly. Ta-da! Oh yeah, we're in. Here's our little buzzer. Ta-da! Hitachi drivers. They were the duck's guts and the industry standards, what you expect to find for the uh, LCD. Um, so that'd be multiplexed of course uh, because of all the dot matrix segments we've got a fair child job in here i don't have to zoom in anymore i've got a 4k camera i can just zoom in in the edit um what's that a 64h440 don't know scott any idea <laughs> no. nope and you got 8ks ram that's it a couple of test points and uh, oh yeah, there it is, six two six four, absolute classic. And you've got to have a four, got to have some four thousand series CMOS in there, four zero seven one. Um, and the external connector, that's about all she wrote. A bit of diode switch in there for the batteries. And there's going to be one up there too for the SRAM because uh, you don't want uh, them powering the whole thing. You just want the battery backup, of course, powering the SRAM. So we've got some diode steer in there for the batteries. And uh, oh, got some tants on there. Um, but that's about all she wrote. Jeez, not much in it, is it? Pretty quick teardown. Okay, let's do some three-handed flippity doodah here. And what's on the bottom? Not much. That's it. We've just got your standard, uh, standard membrane keys. Nothing special. Membrane sheet straight onto uh, the contacts. And that's all she wrote. PCB contact uh, power switch, sliding switch standard fare for the time but that's about all she wrote on that neat there you go standard uh, casio calculator construction for the time nothing fancy just standard uh, fiberglass pcb and surface mount parts all off the shelf stuff no worries about the only custom thing is the you know the flat flex lcd and uh stuff like that the rest of it um unless they you know, of course uh, you know roll in their own uh, processor in there but that could just be a mask uh, processor or something like that we're not sure that's pretty close to defpom def m hmm have, have you told the history of defpom scott not publicly no not publicly would you like to Oh, I can do if you want. No, it's, no, it's all right no it's secret it's a no, secret it's, it's not, it's not really secret. and no he's not deaf <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but he's a POM. He's a POM. I can vouch for that. POM and a New Zealander. What a weird combo. Anyway, um, we can disable that buzzer. Check it out. This bad boy also had uh, rectangular to polar, uh, rectangular and polar conversions, uh, combinations, permutations. Fantastic. And an engineering key that worked directly on the result as well. So if we just put in a exponent like that and then hit the engineering key, there it is. Look at that. Oh, Bobby Dazzler. 
Oh, geez, we can go a long way. All the way with LBJ. How many decimal places do we get on Pi? Oh, come on. If we actually go mode WRT, this shows us we've got these different uh, program modes, P0 through to P9, so 10 different programs, presumably, that we can put into this bad boy. Is that showing our memory remaining? All right, please excuse the crudity of this video. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Uh, what we're going to do is run a simple program in this thing. So what we'll do is we'll just go reset all on the back there. And uh, this stupid um, Logitech webcam wouldn't focus on this thing. I had to actually set manual focus. Ridiculous. Anyway, ready P0. We're ready to go. So we can actually go into, oh, sorry, mode one here and uh 7520 bytes that's how much uh what memory space we've got left and we've got these 10 uh program modes so we can just go shift uh p0 program mode to select that and then we just go typing in our program so we can do 10 space c equals c plus one let's do something simple and then we can go 20 space i know i could probably don't have to type that in there's probably a shift key for it somewhere print i don't know is there like if then else return go sub print there it is there it is print c and 30 space go to 10 hugely complicated program and i love it how it updates the uh how much memory you got left total there 30 go to 10 terrific and then if we want to so now we're in like we're in like flynn right and we can list that so there's our program there you go and we can go into you can see that it's got uh where is it mode zero is run so we're into mode zero like that and we run it execute Unfortunately, it's not going to just spin through the numbers because this thing only has one line display. When you print something, it's going to make sure you see it. Um, so it actually, as a as a like a feature, it actually um, stops and waits for you to actually do that. Same if you like input, uh, you want to input a number or something like that, it'll come up. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if we had a program that would uh, run all the way through, then that would be fine if we didn't have print. But every time it executes that print instruction, it waits for you to press execute like that. So there you go. That is a basic program, and no pun intended, on the uh, Casio FX730P. So thank you very much, Scott, for uh, sending that one in. It's an absolute classic, and a, like all the scientific Funk I just love it having all the scientific functionality. It's even got hex on here, but it, it don't, doesn't really have proper. Um, although it probably could. Ah, oh, you remember mid dollars? <laughs> Fantastic string length vowel. Anyway, um, it had like scientific capability without having to write a basic program. It's, it's kind of like just you know single line execution uh, kind of thing. So that was that was really quite neat. So this calculator probably would have been the duck's guts back in 1987, I think it came out. So it, hands up if you had one, hands up if you still have one, if it's your daily uh, confuser that you're uh, using, <laughs> let us know. Are you still, anyone still using like a, a pocket basic programmable calculator like this on a daily basis? Let us know. Anyway, thank you very much, Scott, the Def Pom, for sending that in. You may have seen uh, Scott on my channel before. He did one of my, um, like, a featured uh, video. It was really cool doing a uh, calibrator uh, repair. That was a fantastic video. And uh, I'll link in Scott's Def Pom channel at the end. Definitely check it out. Catch you next time. Hello.